الحمد لله رب العالمين <تصفيق> وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أهبت في الله The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said الدنيا سجن مؤمن جنة الكافر that the life of this world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever. And in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن مما أخاف عليكم من بعد ما يفتح عليكم من زهرة الدنيا وزينتها متفق عليه. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said, from the things that I most fear for you after me is the opening up of the beauty of the dunya or the flower or the rose of the dunya and its beauty. Meaning, the perils and trials and tribulations of the dunya. That the Prophet ﷺ feared this force because look how many of us are distracted and immersed and even go to the extent of worship in the dunya. That we should use this dunya as a means. And as we talked about in our lessons on zuhud, asceticism, and al wara piety, that we mentioned important differences and that mostly what we should be concerned with it doesn't mean we should reject having wealth if someone inherits wealth if someone has an excellent business plan and they attain a very strong business or they come across wealth from some other halal means then this is khair alim if you use it for khair but the Zuhd that we're talking about refers to not letting the wealth occupy your heart so that your happiness and your sadness is not related to your wealth. And your motivation is not related to your wealth, how much wealth you're going to achieve out of the deal, how much financial gain you're going to get out of doing the conference or participating with the brothers, or helping the people, or whatever the case may be. But instead, you are not allowing that wealth to occupy you and consume your heart. And you are keeping it at bay and keeping your heart open to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and loving Allah, and striving to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah love us all. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And help us to come away from the sins and the things which deter your love, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And so, loving the dunya and loving those distractions is what we're warned against. And that's what one of the most important benefits of this hadith and the other hadith that we mention, a dunya sijin mu'min jinnatul kafir, that the dunya is a prison for the believer and a And a paradise or paradise for the disbeliever. That those, that comes from the consumption in the dunya. And to, to such an extent that for some people they take, they take it as gods. They take those, they take the dunya and their attainment, their achievements, their attainment of the most beautiful wife. Regardless of 
what she, even if she doesn't love him, even if she is just a woman of materialism, even if she is the most wicked of people and the most wicked in conduct and the least trustworthy of people. But it's just to have that, as they say, a, tr um, a trophy wife. Or it is to attain that car or that house, to the biggest house, the most beautiful, even though it's attained by a riba. Even though you don't truly own it, you pay taxes until you die. And even though you are in massive debt, but it just looks good and it looks good for you to be at that home or to have that car in front of the people, to have the praise of the people. And all your happiness is tied to that. This is what the mu'min should really be free from. But in fact, many of the Muslims are tainted by this to greater or lesser extents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to remove those sicknesses from our hearts and be of those whose heart ta'allak bi rabbina wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.